Hey YouTube, iTechnology Day here, and I'm finally getting around to the review of iOS 4. I know it's been a while, I've been on vacation, I'm sorry. Uh, I wanted to, on top of being on vacation, I want to have some time to really use the new operating system and learn all the, the features there are to be talked about so I can tell you about everything. And also I got my new uh, MacBook so I could sync, uh, synced it with an Apple computer so I can show you the features that wouldn't be there if you were syncing with a Windows computer. Um, so I guess I'll get right into it. Obviously the first thing you're going to see is that I got a um, background which is pretty standard and folders. I have I think 12 folders here. I just love to use them. Now I'll, I'll start with folders. The biggest problem that I find with the folders is that you can only have 12 apps which for me is really a hindrance because I have three games folders just because I can't keep I have a lot of games. So uh, if they could make it expandable, where you could open up a folder and then scroll through it instead of just being stuck with what's on the screen, that'd be really great. But uh, so far, folders is way better than anything I've ever used. It's a jailbreak folder, so I'm still pretty happy with what I have. Um, next, I'll go into the mail with the unified inbox. Here's what it looks like. You got your all inboxes, and then you got all the extra inboxes here. And then down here is your what you would have got originally on the older operating systems you clicked on this it has your inbox and sent and all that stuff otherwise if you click on it up here all it's going to do is bring you to that inbox and then you got your unified inbox which is actually kind of annoying for me I don't really like it it seems to get in the way more than anything but uh, it's there for some people um, all the apps all the default apps you got a little bit of an update even if it's not in the actual program itself it has a little bit of a visual difference. All the icons have that. Some of them aren't as noticeable as others. Uh, I'm gonna go into YouTube here, and uh, it's already playing a YouTube video. There aren't really a lot of changes in YouTube. The only one that I found so far is that uh, you can now watch it in portrait mode, which I don't know why you'd want to, but you can. So that's there for those people. Uh, let me go into my settings app here. Uh, you have airplane mode now, which turns off Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and uh, just like the iPhone now. You got your wallpaper, which you can choose default wallpapers for your lock screen and your background here. Um, one of the things that wasn't really mentioned, but really is a great feature, is uh, if you go into your passcode lock, you have the uh, right here the switch is a simple passcode. And if you turn that to on, then you have your uh, simple numeric keypad, the four four code password, but you turn it off, you get a full keyboard, you can have a password as long as you want for your lock screen there. Um, besides that, there really isn't a lot. Accessibility has a little bit of extra stuff. They got a large text option now, so you can change the size of your text. Uh, let me see here. I'll go back. You get the iBook Store now, which it doesn't. iBooks doesn't come with the operating system. You have to download it through the App Store. And from what I've used so far, there's a lot of free books, so it's it's worth getting. But uh, I really don't like reading on this screen at all. So, uh, but besides the uh, the f books, I really like using it for the PDF reader. And that's pretty much the only reason I would have the iBooks store is for the PDF reader that's built in. So it's definitely worth it if you want to check that out and get it. Uh, Game Center isn't on here yet. Um, and Game Center is going to be coming this fall, probably around the release of the iPod Touch 4. Um, and I'm not sure exactly what was going on if they just uh, didn't get it completely developed in time for the release. But uh, it'll come out sometime this fall. Uh, Maps has a little bit of an update and it's not visually noticeable as much. The where am I turned from the crosshairs to this arrow. But if you click on it, it's super fast now, a lot faster than it was on the old operating system. And it's exact. It tells you exactly where you are now versus it used to tell me I was about a, a block away from where I was, but now it's dead on. Uh, so I don't know what they actually did to change that, but it's a lot better now. Uh, besides that, iOS 4 doesn't have a lot of brand new features that are really innovative. You got the uh, backgrounding, obviously. Uh, we go in here, you can see all the apps that are running in the background. 
And my biggest issue with backgrounding is that as, if you close an app, it doesn't automatically go away. It automatically goes into backgrounding. So if you forget to go into backgrounder, like I did, if you forget to go into backgrounder and close each app after you use it, it just keeps running in the background, which Apple says that they've designed a way that it won't drain battery, but I think for a lot of people, they're going to forget and they're going to have a whole bunch of apps running in the background because they forget to go back into backgrounder to close them, and it's going to uh, drain your battery. So, uh... From what I can tell, the backgrounder isn't really helpful because uh, I've used backgrounding apps in the uh, Jailbreak Cydia and it works with any app. It just puts it in the background still running, whereas the backgrounding for that Apple designed, it has to be programmed into your app. Uh, it has to be native to your app. It doesn't just work. So only apps that have been designed to work with iOS 4 will actually be able to be backgrounded. But I'll give you an example of that with... Uh, Pandora here just so you can get a feel of what backgrounding works like when they actually build it into their apps so I close it and still running here I open up backgrounding here and now it says that Pandora is the one playing the music and I can go right back into Pandora or I control it down here and uh, besides just the music controls they have here they also have a little widget for uh, portrait orientation lock which is really helpful because uh, I actually prefer to keep my portrait normally locked just because I, I use my iPod when I'm laying down a lot and switches to landscape when I'm uh, browsing the web or whatever with it so having that orientation lock is really helpful for me uh, besides that there isn't any uh, anything that's really really big that you get from changing uh, one thing that's kind of small and only for uh, Mac users is your you can get your uh, pictures grouped by albums, events, and faces now. So that's actually I'm still trying to figure out all this stuff because I'm just a new Mac user, but it'll be helpful once I can figure it out. So uh, that's the new iOS 4. I'm sorry it took so long. Hopefully it was better than some of the other ones because of the time. Um, thanks for watching.